all to listen today. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking to you about my personal journey. And um, when I was doing the notes for this yesterday, can everybody hear me by the way? Um, when I was doing the notes for this uh, yesterday, it occurred to me that my journey is sort of split into three parts. <laughs> or if you like, maybe three acts, like a three act structure to a film. I'll say that because it makes me sound more interesting. But, um, uh, so I'm going to, and each act has actually got a little message attached to it. The first message is that life can sometimes get in the way of your journey. The second message is don't let realism get in the way of a good idea. And the third message is that baby steps can in fact make giant leaps. All sounds very cryptic, but it isn't really. So act one, picture the scene. Um, 16, punk, uh, decided that I was going to leave school and become an actress, like you do. So uh, it was the only thing I thought I was any good at. I suppose ultimately uh, I was creative, I love creative writing, I love theatre, the arts and all the rest of it. So I thought there's absolutely um, no way I'm going to do anything else and I was absolutely determined that I was going to make it in acting and I was going to be discovered. So I set out very determined on my journey on this path uh, to become an actress and then like a lot of people, probably to be about an, a, a year and a half maybe, uh, I decided that I couldn't earn enough money to live. Uh, so I thought well I'll get myself a temporary job. Well, actually, it was a full-time job, but I thought, I'll, I'll do my acting in my spare time, and I'm sure somebody is going to discover me one day, so it doesn't really matter what I do. So I then entered the insurance industry. No disrespect to anybody who's in the insurance industry, but it doesn't really fit uh, with my skills and strengths. So I entered the insurance industry, um, but well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be discovered anyway. So imagine my surprise, 22 years later, <laughs> I thought, well, hang on a minute. I'm still in the insurance industry, <laughs> haven't been discovered as an actress. But how on earth can that happen? I was so determined, I was going down this path, I thought it was going to be great. And then somewhere, approaching 40, I'm over here thinking, hang on a minute, what went wrong there? Um, and I think that's very common, isn't it, with, with lots of people. You hear it all the time. Um, life just sort of get, gets in the way. You know, people have relationships, they move away, uh, have families and all the rest of it. And what you set out to do, you somehow sort of get diverted from that path. So as I say, I was approaching my 40th birthday. And this tends to happen, doesn't it, when you have a, a birthday with a zero on the end. You just think, I have to re-look at my life and, and see what I'm doing. And um, I, so, I suppose that, that brings me on to, to act two. So I decided I was going to leave the insurance industry, and I have to say I did have the support of my husband at the time, which was very helpful. And I thought, I know I'll start my own business. I'll get out of the corporate world, and I'll start my own business, and I'm going to be a great success. And that didn't work, my first business. Then I had another business, and that was a bit more successful. But there was just something, I don't know, something missing, something not quite right. I was thinking, why am I not feeling like this is the best thing since sliced bread? So um, I decided to have a, a little sort of period of, of self-discovery, which sounds a bit self-indulgent, I know. But I thought, no, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just finding out what makes me tick. I certainly never did anything like this uh, at school or whatever, which is a great shame, I think. So I've now got a vast self-help library. <laughs> I've got every How to Achieve Success book and all the rest of it. They're all on the shelf there. And I think one that stands out um, probably more than any other is, is a Ted favourite, actually, Ken Robinson. Um, I think he has some very popular sort of videos uh, on Ted. And he's written a book uh, called The Element, how finding your passion changes everything. And that really <coughs> is a great book, so save you buying all the rubbish ones that I bought, uh, if you're going to buy one, buy that. And uh, I think for me, if, if you boil all these success books down, they rely on uh, one key message, which again is something that's highlighted in Ken's book as well, which is you need to find out what you're good at. And that sounds a bit obvious really, but your skills, so what you've learned in life, and your strengths, and also what you feel passionately about. Because there's an area between those three, I could have done a slide on this actually, easier, um, where those three things overlap. 
and it's a sort of like a little magic triangle in the middle. And if you can set a goal in your life around that bit in the middle, you've got much more chance of achieving it. And it, it sort of makes sense really, doesn't it? So if you set yourself a goal based on what you're good at and what you feel passionately about, you've got far more chance of achieving that. And also you're going to enjoy the journey. So that's what we're talking about, the journey. So I thought, right, well, you know, I spent money on all these books, I might as well do something about it. So I set myself some goals that day. Um, so um, I did actually, because I, I don't know if any of you set any goals and use the SMART, have you heard of SMART goals? So um, it's specific, measurable, <coughs> achievable, realistic, hate that word, um, and uh, time bound, I think is the T. So I thought, no, I'm going to do it properly, and I, I was setting lots of goals around what I wanted to do in my personal life, as well as what I might want to do in my business life. I thought, I know, I'll, I'll try an experiment. Um, I'll think of one, because it was this realistic thing that was, um, so I just, it jars with me, the word realism, and, and that sounds ridiculous, but I suppose as a creative person, I'm like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, and well, that'd be great, and how hard can that be, you know? So when it says realistic to me, it's like, no, um, drains me of energy. But I thought, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll think about the best possible thing that would make me happy. So something ginormous and, and massive goal. But if I actually achieve that, it would make me the happiest person in the world and, and very fulfilled. So I was, you know, I was still looking at the, you know, the skills, strengths, passion. So I, I wasn't, I don't think, being deluded. Um, but I decided that I was going to set myself a goal to, to actually write and produce a feature film. Da -da, like you do, um, but I suppose uh, looking back, uh, the realistic bit did kick in because I thought I'm going to give myself a good period of time to achieve this. So I thought I'd give myself ten years to achieve this goal. So that was me being realistic. Although in most people's eyes, you know, wanting to become a film uh, writer and producer from scratch is, is probably totally unrealistic. But anyway. So I sat myself at this goal, uh, and it was 10 years. And they also, in the, in the goal setting rules and regulations, <laughs> which there seems to be, um, you've got to th this awful phrase called chunking down. So you've got to break it down into bite-sized pieces. So if, if I'm going to be here in 10 years, in five years I need to have made some short films maybe, and, or whatever, and then this in year three, year two. So your first step is a baby step. Um, and it's something that you should be able to easily achieve, so it's not going to be off-putting. Can you imagine, I mean, I have no idea how to get to that 10, you know, my 10-year goal. I, I didn't know any writers, I, I didn't have any networks, uh, I haven't written a film script. Okay, looking back, it is rather stupid. <laughs> Damn. But anyway, um, I was thinking, no, what I'll do is I'll set myself a year um, in order to do some research. Research is a brilliant thing for procrastinating when you're goal setting. Um, so I gave myself a year to research some networks, try and, try and um, get, get on a, a screenwriting course, um, you know, all that sort of thing. So uh, I was quite pleased with myself because I got like, some sort of realistic, achievable type goals and I've got this big, fat, hairy goal that I didn't really know, but I thought, well, we'll see where we go with it. As it happens, the very next day, uh, I was actually going to a business networking event, which I wasn't really looking forward to. Anyway, I went to it, and unfortunately I got talking to an accountant. Now, I must apologise if anybody's an accountant in the audience, but he started talking about tax, and then my eyes were glazing over. And one of the things, another in the rules and regulations of goal setting, you're meant to tell people about the goal, you're meant to tell people what it is you want to do. Because generally speaking, people are quite nice, and they'll help you if they can. Anyway, this man was dribbling on about tax, and I was, I was thinking, oh, I need to network around the room, you know, how am I going to get rid of it? So he said, Janet, what is it that you do? So I thought, right, this is it, I'm going to make him choke on his drink. So I said, well, I'm a, I'm a writer, and I'm going to make a feature film, thinking he's going to splutter. And he went, oh, that's really interesting. As it happens, um, our accountancy firm actually deals with a lot of creative and media businesses. Do you know this man, gave me this man to don't actually. So, well, it might be a good connection for you because he actually runs a new writing festival in Manchester. I'll give you his number. So he wrote it down. So, 
it's my turn to be sputtering on my drink. Because <laughs> first of all, he took me seriously, and I've just told him a big fat fib. And um, he, he, you know, in all good faith, he's, he's given me something to try and help me. So, Act Three: Picture the scene, opening scene. I'm sat on my sofa at home with a cup of tea and said piece of paper with number on and the man's name, thinking I've just told the accountant huge fat fib. Can't really now ring this guy and say the same. But what am I going to do? Now, in terms of setting goals, um, very often this happens. You know, you come across a little hurdle like that and you think, actually, you know, I mean, I'm being ridiculous thinking I'm a film producer. How, you know, how on earth am I going to do that? And the natural <coughs> thing to do for a lot of people is to screw the paper up and put it in the bin. But I thought, no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ring him, but I'm going to come clean. So I did. I rang the guy. He's an absolutely delightful man. Is, is, is my friend now, and he, he knew everybody I needed to, to know. Writers, producers, you name it, he knew it. I then ended up through him enrolling on a, a screenwriting course. Um, so it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And, and I came clean, I said I'm an aspiring writer or something, so uh, I felt a bit better about that. <laughs> but what was really weird was when I was on the first week of the course, I was thinking, hang on a minute, when I was sat down doing that baby step thing, I'd given myself a year to, to get all that information together. And what I actually realised at that moment was all that had happened within a period of eight weeks. And that felt really, really weird and quite mystical and spooky. And I sort of, you know, you've heard about this cosmic ordering and stuff like that. You know, people just write it down and boom, it appears. And it sort of feels a bit like that. But of course it isn't. Uh, because it, it's just goal setting. And when you set yourself a goal and when you write it down, when you tell people about it, um, things just happen very, very quickly. So, um, it, because you focus it, you're just focusing on, on one particular thing. So, um, that now was three years ago. Um, I actually wrote a short film script as a result of the course I went on. Um, and I produced it, I produced the film. Um, it has a group of people in it actually, Mr. Motivator was in it. Do you remember Mr. Motivator? Um, who was great. Um, so I did that. Uh, and then as a result of that, because that was a comedy film, a comedy sort of my genre, if you like. Um, I was quite uh, put out by the lack of, uh, well certainly a film festival dedicated to comedy, uh, comedy short film. Um, and also it was all a bit confusing, you know, the, I know the creative industries aren't a, an exact science, it's not like going into law or something <laughs> like that, but it really bugged me that, you know, um, the advice to me as a, as a new filmmaker was, oh, you just got to go around to festivals and keep making films and you might meet somebody and, you know, it was all a bit, so what I decided to do was set up uh, co-filming, which in essence is um, a talent network for comedy, but it crosses film, TV and live performance. So essentially it's for people like me um, who are starting out in the comedy industry across those different areas I've just mentioned. And, and giving them a leg up into the industry. So we run an annual comedy short film festival, uh, which is just, we had the second one, we've only been running, running, running two years, at the Comedy Store in Manchester, uh, where we have a competition, festival and awards. We also now uh, offer a number of courses on writing and telling, selling TV comedy, and uh, run competitions and all sorts of things. But the big thing about it, and it probably took me about 10 months to get together um, all the industry people who are going to help um, this new grassroots talent, if you like. So I'm now in touch with TV, comedy commissioners, producers of, of comedy film, a cinema chain, all the rest of it. So it's, it's all the ingredients and all the people necessary to help get that grassroots talent um, to, to you know, just give them a platform, if you like, uh, to get their, their work shown. So that's, that, that's co-filmic. Uh, on a personal level, um, I've actually, I'm just in the process of producing two short films, uh, which are going to be shot in March, um, which is really exciting. And uh, so perhaps thinking about it, where am I? Three years into my 10-year goal, um, 
it, it's actually happening a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. And really interesting, if you remember what I said at the beginning, uh, the realistic achievable stuff didn't actually uh, fire me up very much and consequently haven't really done much with that. But my big fat juicy goal, <laughs> surprise, surprise, because it, it, it was something I feel really passionate about, uh, has started to, to really fly. And I suppose if you're going to take one thing away uh, from what I've said today, it would definitely be the um, make sure you tell people what your goals and ambitions are. Because like that guy, if that guy, you know, if I hadn't blurted it out, and I know I was telling a bit of a fib, but if, if I hadn't blurted it out to that guy that day, um, really, um, I don't think things would have, would have happened as quickly. It really sort of turbo boosted my, my chances of achieving that first baby step, which then became something uh, much bigger. So if you could, if I, just to stretch the film analogy one more step further, so as the closing credits are going up in Janet Harrison, The Journey, the movie, uh, I suppose I'll be in my posh frock um, clinging on to my BAFTA at the ceremony. Or perhaps that's uh, just uh, completely unrealistic, I don't know. Thank you very much for listening to me.